gospel radio, our way to heaven. One king and one kingdom making people feel like family. And good evening and welcome to another session, another Friday evening of Interview with the Exes. We are so glad to have you. Good evening, wherever you're listening to us from, whether you're from the Caribbean, whether you're from the US, from Europe, from Asia, from Antarctica, wherever you're listening to us from, welcome to Growth Radio this evening. This is Interview with the Exes. You've tuned in at the right time for the right reason. Uh, we are here every Friday evening from 8 p.m. on growthradiott.com. And we're so glad to have you. Those of you who are listening to us on TuneIn Radio, Radio Garden, listen to my radio, radio.net, my radio hut. Those of you on YouTube Live and Facebook Live, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And tonight we have part two of a very, very, um, interesting to say the least um interview with warrior you see it there on her on her her page warrior sniper i would say enemy of darkness encourager wife sister mother counselor intercessor soldier fighter combatant lieutenant sister and mother in the faith am i leaving anything out people i leaving anything out pastor oh gosh Pastor Jillian Craig Brito. We welcome her back. We appreciate her. We just want to give you an appreciation, a warm growth radio. Welcome, Pastor Jillian. Welcome back to interview with the exes. Thank you very much, Sister Sharice. It's good to be here again. All right. <laughs> good night, everyone, wherever you are listening from. Good evening and blessings to all of you. Amen. Amen. And Pastor Jillian, is there anybody in particular you'd like to shout out before we start our interview? I want, yeah, I want to shout out my 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 family, of course, uh, my husband and my children, my four some children, and I want to, to shout out this evening um our wives, some wives on the war part. Why? Because we are excited. We're going to meet in a bit. Oh, we just came off an awesome three days of waiting before the Lord. And I just want to salute wives on the war part this evening. All of you wonderful wives who win with the word. I salute you today. Amen. Wives on the war part. That sounds dangerous. Not even dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the war part? What war, war part? What war are wives in? We are on a war path for healthy marriages, healthy families, and also for our lifestyles as wives, the pattern, mm -hmm. the lifestyle of Jesus Christ, that we will be the woman because we that God wants us to be, because we are first a bride to Christ before we are a wife to our husbands. True. Oh my gosh, that is so, that's critical information. That's essential information. That's revelation right there. You know, that could change, that could rock plenty relationships the right way. <laughs> you know, and um, I hope perhaps at some other point you could come and talk to us more about that. I mean, I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I'm not a wife yet, but it's good to have the information. You know, it's good to be prepared and it's good to learn from the older ladies, you know, what it takes, you know. And so even in that vein, I'm seeing a sign behind me at the love room. Now that's PG 13, PG 15, PG 18. Where is that one? Uh, it's the atmosphere where <laughs> the animosity, the hatred, the bitterness, the unforgiveness that would have developed in any marriage in this room, we declare that there's an anointing in here to detonate it in the name of Jesus. 
to detonate it. <laughs> oh, to this detonate the unforgiveness. This is the room where my husband and I coach married couples. Oh, uh-huh. it's a good thing if they yeah. coach. I thought you was going to say something else. Okay, <laughs> bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But we call it coaching, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever it is, all, all glory to God. All right, that's amazing. So that's the place where unforgiveness and everything unhealthy is detonated. Yes, yes. By through, through, of course, when we deal with it from the word of God standpoint, and of course, my husband and I sharing our experiences in our marriage. Yeah. So this is where we meet with um, with married couples. Okay, well, I'm sure you've, you've had quite, even your story, and I'm sure you've had a lot of other stories that Mm-hmm. you know would have tested or uh, have gone you know tested to each other to the brink right so yes in, everything in, in this room sister Cherise yes everything in this room is red everything is okay. everything is red yeah. all right so when does this happen oh, is it just counseling couples come in for counseling what tell us what happens how is it how does it work well uh, well, it's done through referrals when couples come and they get results. They tell other couples and they call and ask for appointments. And we see couples um, as they as they call for appointments, we make appointments with them to meet with them. Okay, okay, nice. So it, it's not. Money. It's just not for um for couples from our ministry alone. We yeah. see people, a lot of people. Any couple. Any couple. Yeah. Okay. And, and is everything that... in here is mm-hmm. absolutely we we provide um refreshments when they come and um, we provide um we have some placemats that we make with marriage coats on it that we give them when they're leaving to for when they're having breakfast and lunch together nice. and um everything in the, that is done in this room it's done absolutely free people are just free to give a love offering to the ministry if they choose yes. but it's not mandatory okay. but there's no cost to this all right all right well people are you hearing the love room is open for business <laughs> And they are in the business of love. All right. So give Pastor Jillian Warrior, Jillian Craig Brito, a call. If you are a couple, if you are in a relationship and you need some help, things might be going downhill a bit, you know, as it's possible, it's possible it happens. Um, and you just need, you just need a little bit of help, a little bit of coaching, um, non-judgmental coaching, but it's something that could get you all back on the right keel. So I think that's a beautiful, beautiful way to enter into our interview and with the love <laughs> in a loving atmosphere. Um, so, but, you know, last week we talked about that, um, you know, you started off as a fighter. You're always yeah. fighting, you're always vexed, you're always yeah. angry. Mm-hmm. So, was there any love? Did you grow up with love in your household? I mean, what what environment did you grow up in? Well, I <laughs> nice question, Cherise. Um, I always say that um, my environment was one that I would describe as dysfunctional. Um, why do I say that? Um, I. I am the eighth of 12 children. I now um, only have eight of my siblings because three have died. And um, I came up in an environment where my mom did everything to the best of her ability. And hear my words well, the best of her ability. She did it to the point she knew it. Um, So throughout my childhood and coming up I did not grow up with my older siblings because of of my of my mother's lifestyle which I don't have the time to go into at the moment um we are 12 children you know five different fathers and um so my older siblings lived with grand grandma one of my other sisters lived with one of my mother's friend my brother grew up with my grandfather so I didn't know them 
in coming up. We, the younger set, as I said, I am the eighth of 12. I'm eighth place. So <clears throat> what happened is in coming up, mommy did, when I say she did to the best of her ability, yes, she made sure we went to school, we had the best. My mother took care of us by playing um, way, way. Today we have play way and it's legal. She did the illegal one. So there were times my mother was um, arrested and that sort of thing. We would be home, we would hear your mother got arrested and all of that. So I never heard, well, up to a point, I'll get to that after a while, but in my childhood, I never heard my parents say, Jillian, I love you. I never heard that. And um, coming up as a child, my mother, my father, my biological father, he, um, there was physical abuse involved. So there was always a whole lot of turbulence going on. Of course, we grew up in survival mode. You just learned to survive because that's what mommy did. That's what we learned from mommy. Just survive. Um, and so at the age of, 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 of 12 years old, I, I attended Baratari Junior Secondary. So on, um, on the age of 12, going on 13 is when I met my husband. I think I might have mentioned that in the last. So I met my husband, entered into what we would call relationship. <laughs> and um, by 15, 15 years, 15, 16, I was shocked up. What had happened is with the physical abuse and the up and down, every time mommy got licked, we get put out. So she got tired of that. She stayed living with my dad and she rented another place for us. And I was made to manage that home. I, I, I was not the oldest in the home, but I was what mommy deemed the most responsible. So when we there on mommy come, came once a week, now she made sure we had everything to eat, clothes to go to school and whatever. And however, I had up my boyfriend, so eventually what happened is when he come to look for me, crying, don't go home, and he moved in. No problem with her. So I am I am an individual who I, as I said, I would have said like, I went to Elder Blue. So when I was shacked up, I was I was now in form four. So when, when Pete was leaving for work, I was leaving for school. We left home together every day. And, and so what I needed to say based on your question you asked me, when I met my husband in 1983, the 22nd of July, 1983, to be exact, it was a Friday, he said to me, you don't know how much I love you. Now I am 12, going on 13, he is 15 years old. And so what happened when we talk about that physical fight in um, Sharice, what, and just yesterday I met with a young lady and I was sharing with her what I recognized when I became more knowledgeable and I got more insight as to what was going on with my life. I realized I was not fighting for the man. I was fighting for the words, I love you. Because I believed that nobody else was ever going to tell me that. And so the first person who said that to me, I felt I needed to hold on. So I became needy. I became, I would be in school. And if you look through my school books, you will see me writing. This name here, Jillian Craig Bertoy, is in a lot of my school books from, from senior com. Because I would sit and I'd be writing Jillian Craig Brito. And I'll tell you, when you don't know who you are, those who are listening to me, when you don't know your identity, when your identity is wrapped up in an individual and you are depending on somebody to tell you who you are, you are depending on somebody to tell you you are beautiful, you are depending on somebody to tell you I love you and you don't know who you are. What happens is you become clingy, you become codependent. Everything is that person. So this is something I would say. I would say at that time, Sharice, even as young as I was, 
even if we finish, even if my, even if Peter and I finish, when I'm ready to have my first child, I go and I look for him. So there was, there was no Jillian. I did not know who I was. And so I so, so to answer your question, no. The first person that told me I love you is the man I'm married to today. And I was a child and to fast forward a bit, I know I, I know pastor my mother. That's a whole next testimony. And when I was 48 years old, and that was four years ago, one Sunday morning as the spirit of the Lord was moving in service, my mother left where she was and she she came and she held on to me and she said, Jillian, I, that was the first time I ever heard those and it meant a whole lot. But, but I'll tell you something, Sister Sharice. My mother is I think my mother would be 79 years old this year. And she asked to share the first chapter of her story. Now, I knew quite a lot of my mother's life because we spent a lot of time with my mother. And she did a lot of wrong things. And, but when my mother began to share the first chapter of her life story, it became clear to me why my mother was not able to tell us that she loves her. Because she spent a whole amount of her life going from man to man looking for love. And so her love tank was empty. She came and she, of course, you're going with different men. So you now have all these children. Your love tank is empty. So you have nothing to dispense to them. And so our love tank is empty. So she went into relationships. We went to into relationships with our love tank empty. And this is why the I love you that came from that young man at that age for me became so valuable. Wow. Wow. <laughs> my God, my God and my king. And, you know, um, Pastor Jillian, that is so profound what you say there because so many young girls, so many young men, are in that exact situation. Mm -hmm. They are desperate for love, desperate to hear somebody say, I love you, you know? And it's like, and I've heard this before, you know, that there is a, a God-sized void inside of each of us right. that only love can fill. And who is love? God is love. <laughs> God, God is love. God is love. So unless you get that, unless you hear that from the source, human <laughs> beings everywhere, regardless of how you're born, where you're born, you know, in the sea, in, in, in the hospital, you're seeking, you're needing, you're searching, you're desperate <clears throat> to find that piece of missing piece of the puzzle of your humanity, love. <clears throat> wow, wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is, that's profound. <laughs> that is profound of course i should say that i get so many i love yous now from my mother <laughs> my dad has know. passed on but my mother because i see my mother all the time because yeah. she's involved in everything Yay. where ministry is concerned she she's at services she's at yeah. women's ministry she's She's just involved. That's awesome. I hear I love you. If I call my mother now, we don't hang up without saying I love you to each other because guess what? God has filled our tongues. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and even for those who are perhaps listening, they might have a loved one. They might have a neighbor whose tank is empty. What do we say? What, how do we approach persons like that? How do we address it? Well, first to begin, the whole thing about it is nobody comes. And this is why we like when I said earlier, um, 
this room is where we detonate a lot of things and it's not it's not a it's we're not with a wand it's sharing our experience and it's also letting people know that their experiences that they have had shapes their mindsets and therefore as it shapes their mindsets when they get into relationship it, and it doesn't first have to be a relationship with a male or a female, but even their relationship with their siblings, their relationship with their parents, you know, because of those experiences, their mindsets are shaped. And so they don't know who they are. They don't know how to love themselves. And so it is very important to let people know that they need to come to know who they are because it is only when you know your identity in Christ. That's what that's what brought about the revolution in my life. Me understanding what Christ, what his word says about me, what um what his his word tells me that I am as an individual, I understand and I've been justified. I understand and I've been forgiven because guess what? Because I didn't understand that I was forgiven, I didn't know how to forgive, so I was bitter. And so this is what happens with people. You first have to walk them through and get them to understand that where you are at, like, like for example, um, um, Sister Sharice, I'll give you an example. I used to do empowerment sessions for the Northwest region of Serval. And I used to meet with their at-risk students for six weeks. And they call it empowerment. And what I would do um, a session called um, parents or dad and I. And so I would behave like a man and I would tell, I would tell um, the children, I would say, you tell me if you see your father, because most times uh, we are dealing with young people who don't um, have a relationship with their dad. They might know where they are. They, some of them might not know them. And so I would say, if you were to see your dad now, what would you um, tell him? And then one day this young man said to me, miss, I will tell him, um, next time you're leaving, give my next bowl of condom. And because they were allowed to use profanity in the class because I needed to know where they were at. There were those who said I would cut up it and they would use all the expletives. And this, and when they expressed those things, I got the opportunity now to tell them, listen, there are times that your parents, they themselves don't even know how to parent. There are times that the, you are not a planned pregnancy. They went to have intimacy and you came about. And so as a result of that, I often encourage these young people to go and talk to their father or talk to their mother and ask them, you know, how was your past? How were things? And, and I have had some success stories where they were able to go and hear. And just like I said earlier, with my mother, when my mother, I, I, I didn't finish that point, but when mommy did her first chapter of her life story, that morning there was tremendous deliverance in our service. Do you know why? Because by the time she was almost finished, not finished, people just start young and, and just women, eh? just start popping up and they began pouring out. They just began, and from the pouring out came the tears and and people started my god their expression expressing themselves brought about my god a manifestation and deliverance took place why because of her story because of her saying and when i was looking for this man this man say this man say he go give me um, a place to live and then he was having sex with me i didn't went for that i just didn't know where to live and this is what happened so i I send those young people back to talk to their parents. Some were successful, some were unsuccessful, but got to the place where by the time the class, the, the six weeks was over, they had a different relationship with their parents because they understood that mommy didn't know better. Daddy didn't know better. And so as a result of that, they needed to forgive. And so 
somebody who's been through that. We need to pull them out from that place of bitterness and let them know, listen, don't hold them to what they, they did. Some people, I mean, they are adults and they're still carrying around wounds that they have held on to. I can tell you in um, 2013 at our women's retreat, I was dealing with guilt and shame at one of our sessions. And we read two paragraphs out of the handout and women began standing up and talking. And there was this woman in particular, I would never forget. She was like about 58 that year. And she spoke of an incident that happened in her life where she was raped at five years old. She spoke of it like if it had happened to her yesterday. Because she held on. So people whose tongues are empty, who came into this world with parents who don't even know how to show love. Fathers who nobody who didn't see another see a father. I always tell my 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 husband the way. A girl learns to um um learns uh to, to, to be how she's supposed to be treated, or a man knows how to take care of a woman is by looking at his dad take care of his mom. And so when that exposure is not there, we come into these relationships all wounded. And so we have to teach the people that listen, you need to release and you need to allow the love of Christ to overtake your life. Accept the love of Christ because some people feel because they won't love, and some people, their mindsets about or their thoughts about God are based upon their experience with their father. So they don't even have a relationship. They just know about God, but yeah. they based on um of the, how did that t- tr- treated them? They think God would treat them the same way. Yeah, wow. And that is that's a, a, a spoke in the wheel, you know. Mm. It, it really is because um for the negative experiences that persons have, it is actually giving you a false idea about mm-hmm. the father, about the heavenly <laughs> father. And that in itself is a turn off, mm-hmm. you know, it's a turn off because sometimes people don't want to even hear the word God because they mm-hmm. think you'll, you'll just be like my father, you know. That's right. But, you know, you use of the word just a while ago and we started off with the same word. And I, I want to get a definition of that word and another one that I believe is very closely connected. What is love, Pastor Julian? Well, <laughs> Love, first, love is an emotion. We know that for sure. But, you know, you said something earlier, and it's the first thing, because that's where everything springboards from. The word of God tells us that God is love. The word of God tells us that, and love is that emotion where I like to to zero it in on. Me, love involves caring about someone and listen we want to we want to get some that something clear because some people say that um i want to i want to be clear on this mm-hmm. some people say um oh lord i'm losing my trend of thought if you love me right you would not you would not um treat me that way if you love me uh-huh. you would not do the things that you, you, you did to me And so as a result of that, what happens is that we based on what what love is based on how we are treated. But love is a a set of, 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 as I said, an emotion, but it's characterized by how much we care, how we treat each other. But the whole thing about it is, how could I ask you to love me when you don't even know to love in the first place? Right. You don't know what, what love is. Love is characterized by commitment, okay. by passion, by, by um, me taking care of you. You understand? Love, love, is, um, love is characterized by me even putting you before me. But we don't know that. Yeah. We don't know that. I am just using some things that love is characterized by affection, attraction. All these things come. And when we look at at, at um 
We said God is love, but when we look at First Corinthians 13, what does what does the Bible tell us? Love is patient, love yeah. is kind, and all these different things. Yeah. And so as a result of that, I came to understand, um, Sister Sharice, that love must not elude me. I must not, because you don't know how to love, that does not exempt me from loving you. Like, 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 um, wise would say, uh, uh, but Pastor G, um, the Bible say a man's supposed to love his wife like Christ loved the church. But how I could ask, I used to tell people, how I could even ask my husband to love me as Christ loved the church, and my husband don't even love Christ. That's a big one. You see, because love for all of us comes with an expectation. Yeah. You understand? And so we believe that I am only supposed to dispense love if I am given love. And I, and I, and that's not what, what Jesus did with us, Sister Sheree yeah. says. Yeah. Is it what he did? But if he was loving us based on how we love him, then we wouldn't get no love. None at all. Because many times our actions do not exemplify that. Yeah. So as I say, that emotion that comes, that that love emotion, it 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 is personified by care, by commitment, um, by closeness, by affection. All these things are wrapped up, and that is just what. But as I said, when we look at what God gave us, where love is concerned in His Word, I am required to do that, whether. Anybody does it or not. Hmm. But Jesus. Culture, what does culture tell us? Culture tell us is only if, if, if they love you, you are to love them. And, and that's not my stand. That's that's tough. That's a tough one. That's a tough one, Pastor Jillian. It's tough because, I mean, loving a tough person is tough. And yeah, we have to learn how to hug your porcupine. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> learn how to hug your porcupine. All right, I like that one. <laughs> I like that one. And, and you know, that part that, um, that the word of God says that husbands ought to love their wives, their own wife, eh, all yeah? Not other yeah. people's wife. That's right. right. I just, just had to put that there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get that in. You gotta get that in. Right. It says your own wife. Husband, mm -hmm. have your own wife. Wives, have your mm -hmm. own husband. Drink from your own fountain. Drink your own water and mind your own business. So that husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. You said that your husband was unable to love you like that. Although he did say when you were, you were very young, you don't know how much I love you. That's what, right. did, what did he mean then? What did he mean? He, he, he meant that he, he see, uh, if my husband was here and he'd give any story, my husband said that he look, he, he, um, we used to go to this Christmas party, right? Um, in the area, the community, we, we grew up in Lacano Road in Lower Santa Cruz. And, um, Apparently, some a Christmas party we used to go to um every year as children. He used to be there. So my mother used to take us or send us to the Christmas party as children, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds. And every year we used to win the whining competition. My sister and I, right? So he say, my husband say he watching me since that time. Since nine, ten coming along there, he looking at me, say, because girl. Every only when in that whining competition. And he started watching me. He said, So one day he um we were on, on one of those feet where um he and mommy, um, my the father, my mother fought, and we were at the other house, and my sister was up by my father. So he said, Where your sister? And he said, She said, not teach. My my sister told him I'm not around. And so he had this, this young girl looking at, but I'll tell you something, if he was sitting here with me, he, he would say, like he always said, he came for sex, he came for that. He says it all the time. You understand? But on the other hand, it is easy to tell anybody, you don't know how much I love you. 
because that's how he felt. But that didn't change the fact that he too grew up in a grew up in a whole lot of dysfunction. My husband did not grow up with his father. He did not grow up with his mother. He grew up with his grandmother. And um, as a result of all, the, time would not permit me to share all that he went through in his childhood. We thank God today for what he has done. But it is just a few years ago, Sister Sharice, my husband got delivered from rejection, the spirit of rejection. Yes, that's and, a big and one. And so what happened is he went through a whole lot of um, rejection as a child, came into this relationship very young, bought our tongues empty, mm. and because I didn't know how to handle situations, neither did him, because I, the same thing he looking for, I looking for, and I'm not talking about sex. He will love, I will love, and we are nothing to give one another. So we start mashing one another through toes, right? And because I was that individual, listen, who know how to hit you below the belt when I talk? Um, I, what I did is I perpetuated the spirit of rejection. I added to it. So once he did not meet my standard, once he didn't do things my way, I emasculated him. I said things, nasty things. Even when I started speaking in tongues and saying more hallelujah than normal, I was still saying nasty things. And so as a result, I was contributing to the spirit of rejection he was and listen i too had a spirit of rejection yes. so he was contributing to it so eventually what happened is chaos and this is what happens and with wow. couples and then they start saying that they are incompatible it has nothing to do with incompatibility it has to do with dealing with your wounds your childhood wounds your mm. adolescent wounds that we didn't deal with because listen i didn't have any um Premarital counseling. I came to Christ mm -hmm. from the time it was found out that I am living with a man and I have two children. Yeah. Of course, you need to get married. Right. And I wanted to do the right thing. Of course, anybody would tell you you need to get married. Mm -hmm. But that foundation but because of coming out of sin we didn't have the three month marital counseling because i need to come out of sin you know what i yes. mean yeah. you know you can't you know, we you know today we have um different things that are done but at that time i thank god for my past i got saved under julian you cannot get baptized until you deal with that part of your life Wow, it's not great. about baptism and it's not about that yeah. you are living in fornication and yeah. so I would what what I would um go to service Sunday, go back home whole week, yeah, whole week intimacy going on Sunday morning by the altar again. Father, forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> As I come back home, hey, the ball is rolling again. Yeah, understand. And I am getting um, you know, I started feeling the spirit of conviction, yes. and yeah. one day. After being intimate, after having sex one day, one night, I woke up in the morning and I said to my children's father, I had two children, my first two girls, our first two girls. Yes. I, I, we were living at my mother's house mm -hmm. and I asked him to leave. Wow. I said, could you please pack and leave? I want to serve Jesus Christ. Wow. The rest is history because he surrendered his life to the Lord and all of that. But as I said last week, salvation is an event. Deliverance is a process because, yeah. of course, we are in the kingdom. Yes. But the kingdom was not in us. Right. <laughs> so that unregenerated heart continued. Yeah. Yeah. And so it led to chaos in our marriage because he doing his own thing. And of course I say, I can't handle it. So listen to me, yeah. you go hear my mouth and I will hear on bad. I didn't, I didn't fight and thing. I stopped fighting and cursing. Actually I stopped cursing. It may, maybe once I curse after I surrendered my life to the Lord in 1991, right. but I could have still get on bad, real bad too. Wow. They were want an outer control. You mm -hmm. know, that zero to a hundred kind of thing where people like yes. to boast up. 
Oh. Zero to a hundred simply yeah. means you're in the flesh. You can tell yeah. me what you want. The Bible talk about self-control. Yes, self-control. And so that was me. And so, Sister Cherise, that's where it's at with us trying to please each other, but we were not equipped to do so. Wow. Wow. Wow, <laughs> Pastor Julian. That's big. That's a lot. And that is, hmm, honestly, I think the more of the body of Christ need to hear real, real stories, the real, real, you know, because um, a lot of us are playing house. Yep. Even in the church. And as you said, right, you're in the bed with the man in the week. And Sunday, you're saying the heart, the heart is hallelujah. Yep. I mean, yep. this is not this is not to condemn anyone, but no. to, 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 to really point that we need to, to have a come to Jesus moment on the inside, <laughs> the inside, mm -hmm. inside. Because yep. as, and as you said rightly, the Holy Spirit, if you really you want to live for Jesus, Holy Spirit will convict you, Taylor. Mm -hmm. yep. He does a very good job at that. And he did. And it's one of his roles to convict. Yes, yes. yes the convict of sin and of righteousness because he mm -hmm. wants us to live right before God. He wants, I mean, the word says that our body is a temple of the living God, of the Holy Spirit. I mean, that temple is a, 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 a highly esteemed place. It's a place That's of reverence. Right. It's a place of, of respect and honor. You know, um, holy awe. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I can tell you, and 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 at some point with the messing up, I stopped attending services because I got fed up. And um, um the lady that that led me to Christ, um, she was looking for me. She knew where I was living, but she couldn't find me because, of course, when I see her coming, I open my front door, you're staying out there and call her much you want. Because the first time she came to tell me about Jesus was a Sunday evening. And I tell her, I say, you see this? I have no time and I go and look for my man. Oh, wow. She came back two days later, uh -huh. Tuesday. Yeah. Invited me to service the Thursday, that Thursday. Yes. I walked down the old-fashioned altar and gave my life to the Lord. Wow, but wow. with all the mess, the sinning and the sinning and the sinning, I stopped going. And I can tell you, Sister Sherry, she found me. And because of financial stories and stuff, I started selling sauce on the El Sicoro Junction in San Juan. And one day she was coming from choir practice and she saw me. She said, hey, it's you. She said, no, Lord. She said, why are you not coming? I said, I no clothes. I no clothes. Let me tell you something. I could tell anybody. You see me? I love Jesus. The woman bring a rose pink dress oh, sure. and a blue shoe. I could tell you. You should that not dress, do nothing. The dress was ugly. <laughs> okay, and you're fine clothes. <laughs> I had a pink dress. It was, oh. a, it was a kind of satin dress, a pattern satin, yeah. with two kind of strap coming across me here and a blue shoe and I wearing stocking too. And I go in on a Sunday and I rededicated again and I started going. And that is when I decided I can't live this life no more. Yeah. I can't live this life no more. As I said, my husband eventually surrendered. He yeah. surrendered in October of 1991. He surrendered to the Lord. We got baptized. We got married in 1992. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, December 1992. I got pregnant before I got married okay. with our son. So that was a next story. Yeah. You know, because you start hearing now who trying to tell you, well, you need to get this over and done with. Not the past, eh? okay. You need to get it over and done with before the belly starts showing. And I was not interested in that. Right. You understand? Because if you're doing thing, it goes show by your belly. And I wouldn't tell you what I just normally say because I can't say that we are. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah, but I would, appreciate I would it. Personally, what I say, yes. I would say. Yeah. Once you're doing that, at some point, yeah, they're going to be a showing. Mm -hmm. And so we got, I got, we got pregnant with my son. 
and he came in July of 1992. We got married in December of, of, of 1992, a whole story all by itself, no support, just you need to come out of sin and we wanted a nice little thing. Yeah. And it wasn't working out because it's all kind of stories. So eventually all we had was $250. So I bought him a shirt. I'm marrying a borrowed dress. That is a next story. The dress I get married in was ugly. Oh, oh, ugly. As the other day, I came to service and I see a lady downstairs. Yeah. Look at where a dress resemble that. And I say she better. They'll be coming upstairs to visit here today. Oh, <laughs> <I'm> traumatized. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> but I tell you something. You see, when you make a stand for God, yes. as I said, we had two. So he got a shirt, he got a tie. Yeah. A pants he had before. I had borrowed dress and I had a shoes. Um, two costume jewelry ring. Yeah. Um, I bought the little, the little um, glass thing, the little thing that I just put the, the ring in. Yeah. I bought two of that. So the two rings must be cost about $25 for um two pieces. Yeah. 25 for he only, and he only had a stone in it too. Eh? Oh, but... Not I um I bought a um a bottle of clear nail polish. Don't forget that. Okay. Because I needed to maintain the goal. Yes. <laughs> okay. so it's not for the nails. Oh, it's for the <laughs> okay. I painted the two rings and made sure it's right, put it into the case. And uh, Sister Cherise, I got a you know, the story long, so I will cut it up. We traveled to go get married. Yeah. Is there not no car pick us up first to begin? Maxi, you mean? We had to red and white Maxi? Yeah, we went on the road to uh -huh. get red and white Maxi. But oh. when you get the testimony, we walk out the street. First, I began, I need to tell you the weddings are supposed to be four o'clock. Uh -huh. Four o'clock, we, well, we were told we had to pay 300 to get married. Now, remember, I don't spend the 250 the jury ring because we were getting 300 yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, so when was time, when was four o'clock and was time to be in the church, we were home sitting down because we had no 300. Yeah. So when we went to, about after four, we here in good evening. Good yeah. evening, we look out our pastor. Yeah. Though he wasn't doing the wedding, eh? It was another pastor. Yeah. I tell him, I say, you go out, you know. He say, you go out. I say, you go out. <laughs> he go on outside. Pastor said, what happened? I said, we don't have no money, pastor. He said, listen, dress. Get down the road. They going back down. Yeah. We dress now. We walk on the street. We on the eastern main road all by Kev since our wow, they're on the other side opposite standard. Uh -huh. We stand up there with a taxi or a maxi, wherever we get. Yes. Lo and behold, if you see the car pull up, put on the glass. Here the man, where are you all going? We say Port of Spain. He said, Come in the back seat. So if you see us in the back of this, if you see night, let me tell you, you see God. Don't play with God. If you see us in the back, let me cry and I'm crying. Yeah. <laughs> the man asked us. He said, where are you all going? We said, we are going to get married. Yeah. He dropped us straight by the church. Wow. Before he left, yeah. we got to find out it was Reverend Oswald Davis from yeah. uh, up in Tagari, where the man is. He used to and pick us up. You know? oh, sucks. We're going in. Service still going on. Because it's evening service. I get yeah. in service with that, that ugly white dress. And I start to worship, I start to catch power and all kind of story before I go in the office to get married. No, we have no mother giver, we have no father giver. Right. That's another story. M um, my pastor gave my way. Yes. My mother in the church gave my husband away. We left the church, walked down to Independence Square by, by the bar by the corner, Charlotte. Yeah. And Independence Square. And we bought five small tars and we had a reception on the corner there. Wow. And then we took a taxi and went back home. Wow. Sister Sharice, I tell people, we understand. We sell we've we said our vows after six, but I just tell people I have my marriage certificate, so don't worry yourself. Yeah. 
right and this is my third year tier we are moving on to our third year tier of marriage wow. we didn't have no big reception we didn't have no nice dress we didn't have mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. but i give god thanks and praise because i wanted wow. to come out of sin yes and so this happened. Yes, there were a whole lot of ups, downs, wrong the road, whatever. But God has brought deliverance to our lives. And eventually we learned how to do it God's way yeah. so that we could have had a healthier marriage. And it took some time for that. Yes. But I give God yeah. thanks and praise today. So as wow. I, I was saying earlier, it all boils down to you understanding your relate getting into a relationship with the Lord and understanding what his word says about you, embracing the power of his word for that transformation of your life that is going to spill over into every relationship, not just your marriage, yeah. but any relationship, your relationship with me yeah. as sisters in Christ, that if anything happens between both of us, my responsibility is to come to you and say, Sister Sharice, you did me X, Y, Z, and I really didn't like it. Yes. And we trash it out, <laughs> not I stop talking to you, Straight, and we say we serve in the same Jesus. Lord, together, together. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. All right. Yes. That conviction of the Holy Spirit we talked about earlier. I'm starting to feel some of that. But moving on, I'll deal with that. I'll deal with that off air. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Julian, for sharing that. That is an awesome story upon a story on top of a story, story, story on top of the story. That yeah, is yeah, that is big. That is taller than the Eiffel Tower. Our story. That's a more stories than the Eiffel Tower. Oh gosh. But to God be the glory for the great things he has done. Look at you now. Did you think you would end up here? I didn't see it. I didn't, I couldn't see it. I, I, I as you know, um, you know, a lot of people spoke to me, spoke into my life, told me I was called of God and a lot of things I heard, but the reality of it as to how it's going to happen, I couldn't see it. Yeah. But as I said last week, we are gifts that God keeps, you know, unwrapping, yeah. the, you know, like an onion with many layers uh, there's a lot that has to happen before we see um, that those giftings manifest. And for me, that is what I can sit and speak for hours where ministry started and when what God called me into and when I started doing empowerment sessions for women mm -hmm. and then it branched off into empowerment sessions for men mm -hmm. and then it branched off into women's conferences and then it branched off into women's retreat and then it branched off into wives and the warpath until it came into an assembly. And so over the years, there were so many things that I, I experienced, you know, as I said, you know, there were, there were facilities that I used and after a while, you know, the persons in charge would say, I can't use it again. And then I'm going to look for somewhere else. I used preschools. And my office was in KFC in Royal Castle. You name it. I take any PTS bus to go and counsel people. It has been an awesome adventure, you know, and eventually I had empowerment sessions in Shagona, in Marabella. I had, um, I had prayer for women on a Wednesday in Arima was using somebody facility again and it just went from one thing to the next until you know god i i, I tell you um the expansion the emerging came i i remember um our first women's conference in in 2011 and god said keep it in city hall i start crying i said god city hall where i get money to pay city hall and god gave us favor and I saw where that conference went from the first year, 100 and something women to yeah. after a few years, 300 plus women yeah. coming because, as you know, that conference takes the form of Papa God's catwalk, yes. where we hear testimonies of women who have come in through maybe our empowerment sessions or wives on the warpath and the share of their experiences and how they have emerged from trauma. 
into fulfilling destiny, understanding that their wounds don't have to remain wounds, yeah. but their wounds are to become weapons to be used in the life of somebody else. Yeah. So it has been an awesome adventure. Hallelujah. That sounds like it. It sounds like it. And I really hope that there's more, um, that something is going to be written, you know, something is going to, to be put on ink in pen and ink so that you know the generations to come can also be encouraged that they will be given hope you know and i'm so glad um pastor Jillian, that you shared this because this is interview with the exes and we all will x something right x many things but god and you know even what you really want to do with these programs is to encourage persons that you don't have to stay in that situation you don't have to stay in that desperate situation but god has a plan he has a good future and a good hope for you so you know that is that is what i get a lot from your story upon your story upon your story pastor Jillian, is that there is hope there is hope in christ that god could rewrite your story you know regardless of where you start regardless it doesn't matter to god once you give your life to jesus he's gonna make something beautiful out of it look at where you are now you know <laughs> this is amazing look at this it's amazing from searching for love to having a whole room dedicated to love yes i mean god is good and that's not a cliche we we don't say that lightly when you hear believers say god is good we don't we don't mean that loosely we don't mean that lightly and the good is not good. man's good you know, they'd be good that men would do just because they feel in, they have a feeling, let me do this for your God. You know, she just, let me just get she like, Not like that. God's good is perfection. God's good is everything that he is, his entire person, his perfect mm -hmm. personality, his character, you know, and that is the good that we receive, that we experience when we surrender our lives, our hearts, our wills, our emotions, our even our brokenness to Jesus, you know, and um, I really want to say thank you to, to Pastor Jillian. I mean, time has run out on us, but I hope that Pastor Jillian will come back at some point in time and we have another discussion about something else, love, because I didn't even get to ask you about what forgiveness is, you know, mm. if, if love is, is and forgiveness can be separate, separated you know, I, I didn't even get to ask you that, but the time has run out and we do have to say goodbye. And, you know, just before we say goodbye, Pastor Julian, all of these things that you're saying that, you know, it, it, it mushroomed and it blossomed from one ministry to the next until you, God gave you an assembly. You couldn't have done that alone. Mm -hmm. Call some names of some, of some people. I know you can't call everybody. But call some names before we go of those who were with you, who were side by side fighting with you, crying with you, bawling with you, while, while God was birthing these things out of you. As you said, it's quite a lot of people. Um, as I said last week, of course, my pastor, I got saved under my family, my children. I really want to give kudos to my husband, my children you know, who have stood with me throughout, got saved on them. But there are some people that, you know, have really um, uh, stood up and um, over the years and, uh, you know, um, I can call um, one lady um, called um, Carol Peters, you know, she has been a very good friend, you know, very, very supportive um, for a number of years. Um, where Wives on the Warpath is concerned, we began Wives on the Warpath in a store in St. Augustine called Chocolate Trousers, which um, the owner is um, Median Mahon. <laughs> Median, thank you for that space. Look what Wives on the Warpath has come to. I have two friends called Anna James and Elizabeth Rollins. Very, very supportive. I have Donna Ramjata and Sharon Rodney. And as I said, I would, I would run out of space if I call names. And some people, as I said last week, my friend in the U.S., Alison Mendes, 
Um, she's here now, spending a little, taking a little rest. But thank you, Alison. Thank you there. And um, I thank God today for the people that have stood the test of time and seen what God has done. And I cannot do this without the people that God has placed in my life that are present now. And and so tonight, I really want to give kudos to the leadership of Grown to Glory Ministry. I, I thank God because you see all of the ministering and empowerment and all these different things. I now sit, cross my legs, and because of the equipping and the training, yes. I listen to these people. Yeah. I listen to men on empowerment, ministering yeah. to them. It, this is, oh my God, an awesome awesome experience Amen. where God has done his sovereignty yes. has certainly manifested in our lives and all the glory yes. all the glory goes all to God glory. and even with my children sister Sharice yes. the problems I had there are parents that I can sit and encourage for hours because I stood and I believed and I've seen the manifestation of God's power in the lives of my children and my husband. Hallelujah. So I give God praise for this yes. platform. Amen. Amen. And we give God praise with you. We celebrate we celebrate with you as well. God is indeed great. And we thank you so much for all our Growth Radio listeners and those from Growth to Glory and wherever you are listening to us from. Thank you for being with us this evening on Interview with the X's. And um, thank you also, Warrior Jillian Craig Brito, for being with us and for sharing your story. All right. So until next time, people, God bless you and have an awesome, have an awesome, awesome weekend. God bless you. Goodbye, everybody.